Well, it's nice to have you here, Heidi, at the Miami Book Fair. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, before we start with the questions, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book, please? Oh, sure. So, um, my book is my first novel. It's called The Dictionary of Animal Languages, and it tells the story of Ivory Frame, who we meet at 92 when she's madly trying to finish her life's work. Um, and which is composing a dictionary of animal languages. She's worked for many years as a biologist in the field, but before that, um, we meet her at 19 when she's first landed in Paris in, in the 1930s, late 30s, just around World War II. Um, and she's landed to study art and she's just been um, sort of disowned by her family and she falls in with the surrealist. So this sort of two stories intertwine. And then at the very beginning, we get, she, we realize she's been given a letter um, that states she has a grandchild, though she's never married and never had children. So it sort of forces her to confront the past that she's been silent about until now. So that's that's how the book begins. Very interesting. <laughs> and you said so there is an in it sounds interesting. Let's say if one day the book were be to be turned into a movie, who would be the dream cast that you would pick? <laughs> um, it's a really good question, a really hard one. I think. For Ivory Frame, I'd have to resurrect Katherine Hepburn. <laughs> I actually, I saw an image online of Katherine Hepburn wearing this strange white outfit smoking a cigarette, and I thought, I sort of wrote a whole novel around that. So, so she would be perfect. And then I think um, the British actor Clive Owen would play Lev the love interest, because he's a bit of a brooding, dark, kind of mysterious figure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. And then now speaking with the about the dress about Catherine Hepper, would you have a, a clothing boutique called mm -hmm. Course Atelier? Yes. Yeah. Um, and was it the fashion back in the nineteen forties that inspired this book or was it vice versa? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean I think um uh, well, the 30s and 40s are such an incredible time for fashion, and particularly Paris surrealist mm -hmm. fashion. It's like feathers and velvets and just so stunning. Mm -hmm. And But really, um, it wasn't, uh, it was more, it's funny because it, the clothing sort of becomes symbolic in the book because the character is, like I said, disowned by her well, very wealthy family. So she ends up kind of wearing one dress almost the whole time when she's 19. And it's a white kind of out of fashion, like older style dress. But so in a weird way, fashion kind of played into it in a kind of like it almost becomes the character because she's sort of forced into it out of like sheer poverty, essentially has to wear one outfit. So it, that was kind of interesting against the sort of really opulent surrealist kind of um, sartorial situation that was happening in Paris at the time. So it was interesting to play off those two oh, things. It, it is a, an interesting mix uh, to combine both of the things that you do writing and, and also fashion. Mm -hmm. You did mention that uh, she is a biologist. So uh, how, how, how did that, how did you come up with the title for the book for? Oh, it's funny, you know, it, I always had, when I sort of started the idea for the book, it was always an image of an old woman working. Um, and the project was always the Dictionary of Animal Languages. I don't know why that, that title came to mm -hmm. my head. And I tried so many different titles and my editor was like, maybe it's too long. And, and in the end, it just sort of felt like the rightful title for the book because um, it just felt like dictionary, there's so much about communication and about like all the riches that are lost when we lose languages and about how silence is forgetting and sort of having to archive the past to sort of have a future, especially in terms of like, you know, um, disappearing species with animals. So it just felt like it, it seemed like the right sort of title for the, for the work and for the book itself. And it, it is a, a different title that it sticks with people's mind because it's like, that's something different than it's un, and it's unexpected. It's a mouthful, but yeah, yeah. it's definitely a strange because it's sort of like, yeah, I've had people going like, do animals actually talk in the book? And <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that kind of book. But. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it does have a bit of a surrealist element because I liked it encapsulating both. I mean, there's sort of the character begins in art and then has a dramatic shift to science. So I felt like it kind of straddled both of those worlds a little. All right, well, yeah. thank you for spending time with us, Heidi. Thanks so much. About your book. Thank you. Uh, thank you.